Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Siege School. It has been a while. This is episode 24 overall in the series, and it has been a little over four months since my last episode. Now today we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of new players struggle with in Siege, and that is reinforcing the objective site. It is something I've noticed a lot when I'm doing series like my solo smurf or playing with my friends who are lower rank, is that a lot of people in the lower ranks do not know where to put their reinforcements or what to do with them. So today we're going to cover that topic. But before we get into it, we're going to talk about why reinforcing is important. Reinforcements can easily cost you an entire round. Because, as a defender, one of the hardest things to do in Siege is playing retake. And now for the uninitiated, playing retake is when the defenders have to take the objective back from the attackers. In a normal round, the attackers have 3 minutes to take the objective. But when the attackers take it, the defenders only have 45 seconds or less to retake the objective. Otherwise, they lose. And there's a couple reasons why this is so hard. Defenders will have less entrances to get back to the objective than the attackers did. The attackers will also have more firepower than the defenders because their guns are just naturally stronger. And like I said, the defenders have a much smaller time frame than the attackers. These three issues can be amplified depending on how you reinforce the objective site. And we'll talk about how to minimize those effects right after these reminders. Just a few things to keep in mind before you listen to the tips slash rules. One, remember this video is meant for beginners, so if it seems really generalized and not too complicated, that's why. Two, remember that there is no one way to reinforce an objective. There are hundreds of different strategies that you can run on any site. There is no one specific way. But hopefully with this video, I can teach you about how to reinforce in a way that won't fuck over your team in general. And also, number three, a lot of this video relies on you communicating with your team. I understand this can be difficult and not everyone will have teammates who will communicate or even listen for that matter, but the whole point of this is that if you want to be able to reinforce objective sites properly, you do need to have a communicative team, or at least one that will listen. And if your teammates don't want to communicate and it's becoming frustrating, then still try to take what I said in this video, put it into practice, and just work around your team. Or be a good community member and let people know of their mistakes, but try not to be rude about it. No one likes it when someone's an asshole about what they've done. Now that we've covered the basics, I'm going to get into the actual tips on how to set up objective sites. I was considering going through every single objective in the game and mentioning how I would personally set them up, but that would probably take days or weeks to completely finish, so I'm not going to do that. However, I did take a poll on the YouTube channel and asked you guys what your favorite objective sites were, and I'm going to cover a few of those in examples for each of the tips that I have. Also, something important to note about this video, I will be mainly only talking about the bomb game mode. This is because Bomb is a much more balanced game mode than Secure Area or Hostage, even though I personally prefer Secure Area, it is more balanced. And since Bomb has two separate objectives and two different rooms, it has a much different layout and setup than the other game modes. So here's the first tip. Do not reinforce between objective sites. This is something I've had to tell a lot of low rank players when I play with them because for some reason they just don't comprehend it, and normally I give them a very quick explanation as to why they shouldn't do it, Luckily for you guys today, I'm going to give you the full rundown as to why it's so awful. For this tip, we're going to use an example. We are going to use the basement objective, aka laundry slash supply room on Oregon. And obviously, since this tip is not reinforcing between sites, it only applies to the bomb game mode because hostage and secure only have one objective. So you're defending the basement site. Your teammates use four reinforcements to completely reinforce the walls between the objective sites. This is including the connector wall between the sites and the closet, again, between the sites. Now the attackers choose to push in through construction and are planning on taking the supply room site. They push in, they kill anyone holding that site, and then they plant. They now have their own fortress to hold. Since the walls are reinforced and defenders have absolutely no way to go through reinforced walls, the attackers never have to worry about being flanked. They can sit safely in the corners and just watch two doors. Since the playroom only has two entrances, one from the laundry hallway and then one from the electrical room, it is very, very easy for them to just sit there and hold. This is a huge problem for defenders trying to play retake because, realistically, you're not going to get back that site. Since you only have two ways in, and they have probably multiple people covering both of these ways, you are just going to get destroyed by bullets. So how can not reinforcing change this? It's pretty simple, actually. Let's say you remove two of the reinforcements, that's it. The two on the connector wall between sites. And instead of reinforcing it, you have an impact grenade hole or a shotgun hole. 
Now the exact same situation. Attackers are pushing it through construction they plan on planting on supply room. Now instead, once they've planted, they can no longer sit safely in the corners because they can now be flanked through that hole. The defenders now have three entrances into the objective, the attackers are much more vulnerable. And yes, one entrance does make a huge difference, especially when it's from a completely different angle from the other two. This can allow defenders to start a trading war if they start picking one off and then getting picked off right after, or it can allow them to completely destroy the attackers and defuse the bomb. And before, when the objective site was completely reinforced, the attackers were perfectly safe to just sit on site and wait. Now with that open wall, they have to choose to either sit on site and risk possibly getting flanked, or they have to push back and hold the bomb from farther away, say from the construction hallway. Leaving the attackers vulnerable once they've planted is a crucial part of bomb. You can't give them a solid fortress to hold. Because while the solid fortress might be better for the defenders to hold overall, realistically with roamers and having less people on site, attackers can overwhelm them. And I'm not saying that you don't want to make your objective site a strong place to hold. You do. You just don't want to make it completely advantageous for the attackers as well. So by not reinforcing between sites, you give your team more entrances to go through and to help retake objective site. So not reinforcing between site and opening up a rotation hole is more of the team play. It gives your team more options and you won't have a huge risk of just immediately losing. Now that's been covered, one thing that's very important to note is reinforcements between sites are fine as long as you are not completely blocking off the objective. For example, on the same site, Mira is a very popular pick. You put one reinforcement on the supply room wall facing the tower stairs, and one reinforcement in the closet facing the laundry stairs. Now technically that reinforcement facing laundry stairs is between sites, but that's fine because the mirror gives you an angle to hold the objective. And this doesn't only apply for mirror, this also applies for cover walls in general. If say, even if you didn't have a mirror on Oregon, you can still reinforce that exact same wall to act as cover. Maybe you want to hold a staircase, but not leave yourself completely vulnerable to being shot through the wall. So you reinforce that wall, and then you just hold an angle on the staircase. The only hazard comes from completely reinforcing every single wall, because then you limit your options. As long as you leave yourself enough room for a rotate hole for your team to run through, you are perfectly fine. And something that's important to remember is that these rotation holes aren't only for retaking site. I'm not assuming that you're always going to have the bomb planted and have to retake it. These rotation holes are good overall. Let's say you have two people on supply room holding off an attacking push through construction. Both of them are on the east side behind the boxes and don't really know what to do. They can't have two people peeking the same angle, so they're kind of stuck. Having this rotation hole on the connector wall opens up the option for one of the defenders to run through the hole, run through laundry room, through the hallway, and then get another angle on the attackers pushing. Rotation holes are incredibly important and allow you to have much more freedom as a defender and not be locked down on site. Now hopefully you guys understand why I get so upset when people reinforce between sites. Moving on to the next topic, we're just going to start calling them rules because it's a lot easier for me to say, but just remember that all these rules have exceptions. Rule number two, use all of your reinforcements. But this rule has a subset rule. Rule number 2.1, don't always use all of your reinforcements. This basically boils down to the overall statement being, know when to use them. A lot of people will feel pressure when they see everything reinforced, but they still have two reinforcements left, and they feel like they need to contribute to the team somehow. This is pretty normal. A lot of people have the fear of fucking over their team by not doing something. But this is not always necessarily true. Sometimes you can fuck over your team more by using your reinforcements than not. To go back to the previous topic, if, say, all your team reinforced the objective walls, and then you still had two left, and you reinforced walls between sight, you'd be fucking over your team a lot more than helping. Sometimes it's better to hold on to your reinforcements. Holding on to them isn't necessarily always a waste. And if all else fails and you really, really feel like you need to use your reinforcements, go off-site and use them. Go use them on some random two walls that the attackers might push by, that way they can't just shoot through them. Or get other hatches way off-site that might fuck over your attackers from rotating or something like that. You can always use them away from the objective, they don't have to be on objective themselves. Or just hold on to them, they're both viable options. And going back to the original things I talked about, communication is completely important here. If you have leftover reinforcements, just ask your team, where do you guys want them, what do you guys think will be good, and you guys can coordinate an effort together instead of just throwing them down and assuming that it'll be fine. The strats do the middle wall here, yeah? Triple? Uh, yeah. Where's the other mirror go? 
in the same room. Oh, where? We'll give an example for this one, one that wasn't asked for by the YouTube community, but one that I think is a good idea. For archives tellers on bank, to reinforce all the walls on site, you only really need seven. The three facing into the open area office, two facing elevators, and two facing main lobby. So what do you do with these extra three reinforcements? One of my favorite things to do is reinforce the alley access hallway, because a lot of attackers will push in through there and then just spray through the wall to get an angle. So you reinforce that, and it forces the attackers to go right up to the door in order to get in. Otherwise, they could also breach the far right of the wall, get into the kitchen, and sneak on by there. You're forcing them to go through one specific doorway, and then you can just hold an angle on them and pick them off. Bottlenecking is a really good strategy if you know where the attackers are going to push from. And it's a much better use for reinforcements rather than just holding on to them. Now, unfortunately, besides this example and these general guidelines there's not much more information i can give you guys on this knowing when and where to use reinforcements is very much a learned thing the more you play the game the more you'll know when to use reinforcements on specific sites the bottom line of this rule is that sometimes holding on to reinforcements isn't the worst thing as long as everything on site is reinforced you're fine these other reinforcements are just extras use them where you want to help the team and to just fuck over attackers as much as possible rule number three priorities there are a variety of different things that you'll have to reinforce on many different maps or objective sites, and they all have a different priority list. But for the most part, there is a general guideline that you can follow, and that is my personal list. In my opinion, the number one most important thing to reinforce is outside-facing walls. This means walls that are very close to the objective or on the objective itself that face onto the outside of the map. This is where the attackers can roam freely and defenders will get spotted if they go out there. You generally want this reinforced ASAP because if, say, the attackers don't bring a hard breacher, then they are forced to go through one of the other entrances on the map and will have very limited access to the objective itself. And if they do bring one, then they have to use utility to get into sight. If you just leave the wall unreinforced, they could just shoot it open or use sledgehammer, breaching chargers, ash rounds, a variety of different gadgets to easily get in that won't waste much utility. But by forcing them to use a thermite charge, hibana pellets, or maverick canisters, you are making them waste a lot more important resources to get to the objective site itself. And, something I probably should have mentioned sooner, reinforcements are all about wasting utility. You are trying to force the attackers to use all of their utility just to get to site. Then when they're there, they'll just have to rely on their guns to do the rest of the job. Whereas you as a defender will still have utility left. So that's why outside facing walls are so important. Second on the list for priority I would say is hatches. Because attackers, if these aren't reinforced, can easily break hatches and drop into sight immediately. And using these same hatches they can usually get a lot of different angles on defenders and fuck them over completely. So again, by reinforcing hatches you are forcing the attackers to use a lot more utility to reach you and you're also making them waste time for them to go for outside facing walls and then go for all the hatches they have to spend a lot more time than to just run through and sledgehammer all of them and get in and like i said with the outside facing walls if they don't bring a hard breacher then they are forced to go through even less entrances and third for priority i would say is objective walls these are walls to hallways or other rooms that face into objective. You want to reinforce as many objective walls as you can to give the attacking team as little angles or entrances into the objective site. And then fourth on the priority list is gadget walls, which mainly only applies to Mira because she's one of the only defenders who needs a wall just for her gadget. So once you've got everything else, you put down a wall for her to put her Mira on, even though generally Mira herself should be using her walls for her gadget. And then lastly on the priority list is cover walls. These are walls generally between objective sites that defenders will use as cover. These are the type of walls that you really only reinforce when you have leftover reinforcements. Now, I'm going to go through this list again and give you guys an example using the wine cellar slash snowmobile garage objective on Chalet. Using my priority list, this is how all the reinforcements should be used. Two walls will go in the snowmobile garage to reinforce the outside facing walls. Three reinforcements will then be used to get the hatches, one being in bar, one being in fireplace hall, and then the other one being in kitchen. And then moving on to objective walls, you'd have 
two to reinforce the closet inside wine cellar, and then at least one to reinforce the north side facing wall in wine cellar. You now have two reinforcements left over that you can use somewhat freely. If you were to bring a mirror, you could put one facing the snowmobile garage from wine cellar and then one in the closet facing towards the trench area. And even if you don't have mirror, these are still good walls to have, as long as you remember to make a rotation between sites. Like I said in rule number one, that is incredibly important. You need to have ways to get between the two sites. Now if you didn't want to reinforce that, you could use both of these reinforcements to get two more walls on the north side of wine cellar. These would be cover walls slash bottleneck walls because they would help you sit in wine cellar more safely since the attackers wouldn't be able to shoot through half the walls. And it'll also force the attackers to go through one entrance instead of breaking open the entire wall and running through any of it. Now the reason why priorities are so important is because if not all the defenders are on the same page, some people will use their walls somewhere completely irrelevant and then you'll have a lack of reinforcements. Imagine if everyone prioritized getting objective walls and gadget walls and hatches instead of getting outside facing walls. You would probably get all your reinforcements down and then no one would have gotten the snowmobile garage wall. This would allow the attackers to just easily breach it and have someone pushing there while others would push from other sides since they would have so much more free time. Whereas if you reinforced it, you could have bandits and mutes there. This would mean the attackers have to find a way to breach in without wasting their utility. It wastes a lot of their time and it's just a snowball effect of giving the defenders more time and utility. Now again, this is not a golden rule. You do not have to follow this down to a T, but it does help a lot with getting your reinforcements down. Rule number four is about who gets what in time management. There's been a lot of debate about this because a lot of people tell me that I'm wrong. I've told a lot of people that they're wrong and I've covered it in other Siege School episodes, but I'm gonna talk about it again now, is what type of operator should get what reinforcements. The amount of time spent in the prep phase actually setting up objective varies from operator to operator. For example, Jaeger is probably one of the defenders who has the most amount of stuff to put down. He has three ADSs, two barbed wire, and two reinforcements. And since usually his ADSs have to go scattered across both objective sites, this takes a lot of time and a lot of running around. So personally for me, I would say that someone like Jaeger should get objective site walls or outside facing walls, whatever is close on site. This way he spends less time running around getting hatches and more time actually on site getting all his stuff down and then he can roam freely. If say Jaeger was to instead go to a different floor and get hatches instead, he would have to get the hatches then come back to site, put down all his stuff and then leave again. It's just not very good time management. So in my opinion, the anchor should be the one getting the hatches. And I talked about this in my How to Anchor Siege School episode. If the anchors go to get hatches, they are the one wasting the time going upstairs and then downstairs. But they're going to be on site anyway, so it doesn't matter. Someone like Rook, who all he has to do is put down his armor, pick up his own armor, and then put down two reinforcements, can easily get two of the hatches instead of forcing Jaeger to do it. Originally I was going to make a blanket rule where one speed operators would go and get hatches and then two and three speed operators would stay on site reinforcing walls. However, that's not always the case and I decided to change it. There are a lot of three speed operators who really do not have that much stuff to put down. For example, Vigil or Pulse. Generally you bring C4 impacts with them so you don't have anything to put down and your special gadget something you can toggle on and off so you don't have to put any gadgets down. So all you have is two reinforcements and then you're done. Someone like Pulse and Vigil can go get hatches as well. So overall, the blanket rule should be any operator who has a lot of gadgets to put down should be getting walls on site. People like Jaeger, Bandit, and Mute. Meanwhile, operators who do not have much to do, someone like Doc, Rook, or Vigil, those people should go and get hatches. One more thing I want to add about time management is something that I've noticed a lot of people do. Do not reinforce next to someone. A lot of people don't understand why this is such a big deal. It really is really fucking annoying, and it wastes so much time. Let's say border, armory objective site, with using archives as well. I am bandit. I should normally reinforce the armory walls on site since I have so much stuff to put down, and since I'm going to be putting bandits on those walls, I should be taking care of it. So I reinforce the left side wall, and then my teammate, Rook, comes up next to me, and reinforces the right wall while I'm reinforcing the left. Now we both have one reinforcement each. Now we both have to run off on our own to go get other spare walls. And unless we go together, the walls that we get are only gonna have one reinforcement on it instead of two or three that they might need. And overall, it wastes so much time. 
if we both get the armory walls and then we both run over to the archives and get each of us get one of those walls that's a lot more time wasted than just me reinforcing both of the armory walls and rook reinforcing both of the archive walls reinforcing next to someone also confuses a lot of teammates using the exact same example say rook reinforces the right wall i reinforce the left wall and then I run off to archives to reinforce the left wall facing offices in archives. But Rook runs off and reinforces the CCTV wall. My teammates are going to see me putting down a reinforcement on the west side wall and assume I'm going to get both of them. But I don't have two reinforcements. So maybe that wall will go unreinforced and my team will get fucked over because of it. And this all boils down to Rook reinforcing the same wall as me. So to save your team some time and don't waste any resources, please do not reinforce next to someone. It is a waste of time, it is a waste of effort for everyone, and just will ultimately fuck over your team unless you guys have a lot of communication. But it's still, bottom line, wastes time. So always find your own walls to reinforce, or if you are going to reinforce next to someone, make sure it's the third wall on a wall of three. They get two of them, you get the third one, everything's done. But do not reinforce next to someone on a two-wall reinforcement. And that will conclude the information segment of this video. We're now going to move on to the quiz section, which is where I ask you guys a couple of questions or give you guys some scenarios and you guys give me an answer. You guys will have about 10 seconds to think about your answer and then I'll give you my answer and the reasoning behind it. At the end of the quiz, I'll give you a score based on how many questions you got right. One thing that I just really want to reiterate before we get into the quiz section is, since I'll be using a lot of examples for these, it's important to remember that not every site is always set up the exact same way every single time. There are hundreds of options for every single site, depending on what operators you bring. Some of these examples won't have specific operators brought, so you might think, oh, we should reinforce these walls, but I'm not going to really reinforce those since I'm not giving you specific operators. So these are very, very, very general answers. Don't beat yourself up if you do not get it exactly right. Anyways, let's get into the questions. Question 1. This will be about what walls do you reinforce? For this question, we're going to be using the Consa Garage Kitchen site for bomb. There are five reinforcements that are absolutely necessary, three that are optional, and then two left over. You have 10 seconds on the clock. Think of what reinforcements you need to get. Go. And time's up. The five reinforcements that were absolutely necessary were the three reinforcements for the garage and then two for hatches, one in the bathroom hatch and then one in the main lobby hatch. So with that, you have five reinforcements left over, and there are three optional ones that you can get. You can get two in the office hallway coming from the archives side. These two walls are nice to get in case if you're going to have a rotation hole between kitchen and the office. That way people can't just sit in the corner by the hallway and shoot right through the wall. And then one other optional wall you can get is a wall inside kitchen close to the yellow pillar. This prevents attackers who are outside the garage from getting a super long angle into the kitchen. Because sometimes defenders will like to hide underneath the hatch or by the bomb, and the attackers pushing in can easily get a long angle on that if they break open the garage and shoot through that wall. You now have two reinforcements left over. There are a couple spots where you could use these, but they're very dependent on what your team comp is. So don't worry about it, just consider them left over. Question two will be another, what walls do you reinforce? For this question, we're going to use the Cafe Bar site. This is on the third floor of Cafe Dostoevsky. This time, I won't tell you how many reinforcements you'll have left over. Just give it your best guess. You have 10 seconds on the clock. Go. And time's up. There are six walls that you absolutely need to get, and then three that are optional. The six that you absolutely need to get, two of them are the red staircase wall, and then four of them are the piano wall facing into bar and then cold room. The three optional are the two walls from piano into the bathroom, and then one wall in the white hallway facing into the cold room. The reason why you would get that cold room wall is because if you want to hide in that hallway and you don't want to get shot through the piano wall in case if they breach it open, let's say you're on cameras, you don't want to worry about your side getting shot, you put a reinforcement there, you put an impact hole next to it so you can still rotate, and you can hide behind that wall, and you can also watch white stairs without being scared of your side. And the reason why the bathroom walls are optional is because most of the time defenders won't actually hide in there since it's pretty risky, 
But if you do want a rotation hole between bathroom and cold room, then you should get those two walls just so people can't get a longer angle on you. But again, optional. And then you'd have one reinforcement left over. Question three. This will be who gets what. The site will be the bank basement site, which includes lockers and CCTV. You will be using all 10 reinforcements. Two of the reinforcements will go into the CCTV facing server. Four will go for hatches. Two of them are in office and open area, and the other two are in the elevator and main lobby tellers. One reinforcement will be going on the garage wall. One reinforcement will be going in the red hall facing towards CCTV. And then two will be going down on lockers wall facing the staircase. Here are your defending operators. Mira, Jaeger, Rook, Echo, and Smoke. Which operators are going to get what reinforcements? 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. The correct answer is Rook and Echo will be going upstairs to get the hatches on the first floor. Rook and Echo will be getting the hatches because they have the least amount of stuff to put down. Rook puts down his armor, picks it up, runs upstairs, gets the hatches. Echo can run immediately upstairs, get two of the hatches, come back down, get his armor, put down his drones, and then go wait in vault like he always does. Mira will be using the reinforcements on the red hall and the garage wall because that's where her mirrors will go. And then Jaeger and Smoke will get the site walls and the CCTV walls. It would be more ideal for Jaeger to get the CCTV walls, but realistically, these two are interchangeable. The reason why Jaeger should get CCTV is because he will likely put down barbed wire and ADSs in that room. So it makes more sense for him to reinforce the walls right next to where he's going to be putting down his gadgets. But either way, Smoke and Jaeger get those four walls. Question four. It'll be the same thing as the last question. Who gets what? However, this one will be a little bit more difficult because it can contradict one of the things I mentioned earlier. But anyways, the site is Oregon Basement. This is laundry and supply room. The defending team will be reinforcing eight total things. Two reinforcements will go to the meeting hall hatches. Two will go to the main lobby, one on the hatch and then one on the wall next to it. Two of the reinforcements will go into electrical room facing the blue construction area. And then one reinforcement will go on the closet wall and one reinforcement will go on the wall in supply room facing tower stairs. And then you'll have two reinforcements left over. The defending operators are Mute, Doc, Vigil, Jaeger, and Mira. 10 seconds on the clock, go. And time. There are a slight variety of answers you can give, but this will probably be the most optimal answer. We'll start off with the rule that I contradicted, is that Vigil should go get the meeting hall hatches. I did mention earlier that I believe Anchor should always get hatches above, however this is an exception. Vigil for the most part has nothing to do. There's no Rook armor to pick up, he has nothing to put down because he'll generally bring impact grenades. And since Vigil's a roamer, he can quickly go upstairs, get the hatches, and then just roam right away. He doesn't have to go back to site. So Vigil would get the meeting hall hatches. Then you'd have Doc go to the main lobby and get that hatch and the wall next to it. you then have Jaeger go get the two walls and electrical room facing construction. And then you'd have Mira get the closet wall and the tower stairs hallway wall. Mute would get nothing because he has four jammers to put down in specific locations and will probably take up most of his time. Or there is the option where Mira could get the closet wall and then Mute could get the other wall facing tower stairs to save her some time. Since they're going to have two leftover reinforcements anyways, it doesn't matter if Mira gets that wall or not. It's still going to get reinforced. And obviously, if you want to stick to my rules, you could go that way still. Doc could get the meeting hall hatches, Mute could get the main hatch in the wall, Jaeger would still get the two walls in electrical room, and then Mira would get her two walls, one in closet, one in supply room. And then Vigil would just go run and jerk off right away. So this one was a little tricky, so give yourself some leeway on your answer, whether it was right or not. The next three questions will be all quick ones and all pertaining to rotation holes. Question 5. The objective site is the kitchen slash trophy room on Chalet. Where do you put the rotation holes? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. <laughs> Time's up. If you watch any of my ranked videos, this should be fairly easy. You put the rotation holes on the kitchen wall. You can use two impacts side by side if you want. Or you can just use one. It's your choice. So why do you put the two rotation holes there? 
Well, for the most part, you can get a very easy long angle from dining room. As soon as anyone jumps into the trophy room, you can easily shoot them. Two, it makes the attackers very vulnerable. As soon as they jump in, they have to worry about someone being in trophy room on the west side, but then they also have to worry about their south side of someone being in dining room and shooting at them. So it kind of gives your defending team two angles to hold. And then three, if they end up do planting in trophy, you want to have more options to run into trophy besides just running through the hallway and through one of the doors. You can peek through kitchen and try to kill them before you go for the defuse. Question six, the map will be consulate and the objective site will be console office and meeting room. Where do you put the rotation hole? And as a bonus question to this question, where would you put a cover wall and why? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. And that's time. You would put a rotation hole in the connector room between the two sites. You could either put it on the far left or on the far right. And to answer the bonus, you would put a cover wall in the middle. The reason why you put down this cover wall is because it really helps if you're trying to hold meeting room, and then that way the attackers can't get a long angle from the console office windows all the way to that site. This wall completely covers that. And it allows the defenders to hold the rotation hole without having to be completely vulnerable. That way, if you're getting ready to push through, you can sit next to the reinforced wall, reload, do what you need to do, and then push in. It doesn't truly matter what side the rotation hole is on, but I do prefer to put it on the right side, which for cardinal directions would be on the south side. Question 7. The map will be skyscraper, and the objective site will be karaoke slash tea room. Where do you put the rotation hole? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. This one's a bit of a tricky one because you do not actually put a rotation hole between the two objective sites. The answer is that you put a rotation hole on the north side of karaoke room facing the black staircase. You put this here so that anyone who's holding karaoke and if they're getting pushed can easily drop onto the staircase and get away from the attackers. Now some of you might be wondering why don't you put a rotation hole between the two sites? This objective is a little different because it's not like most other objectives. It has a hallway between the two sites. And because the attackers are so limited on how many ways they can get into the room, you don't need the rotation holes completely. If the attackers are planning on pushing into karaoke and planting in there, they have to jump in through the window. Any defender holding from tea room can just shoot through the wall, assuming you left it soft, and kill the attacker planting the diffuser. And since most of the time you'll have at least one defender in karaoke, they can hold that room. And then as soon as it gets too hectic, they drop down through the rotation hole onto the staircase and run back up to peek through the doorway. Now it's time for the bonus question. Originally I wasn't going to do one, but then I thought of one for Kade or Kaid or however you pronounce it. So I told you two things earlier. One, that anchors and one speed operators should go get hatches. And then two, that people like Bandit or Mute, who are going to prevent hard reaches from breaking in, should get outside facing walls. Now Kade fulfills both of those roles. So the question is, which should he go get? Hatches or outside facing walls? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. And time's up. Now normally for bonus questions I give a kind of a joke answer, but this one's actually going to be serious. Cade falls into both categories. He's a one speed operator and he also is one who prevents hard breachers from breaking in. So for his gadget to see a lot of use when encountering hard breachers, he needs to have the outside facing walls reinforced. However, his gadget's also the only one that can completely prevent hatches from breaking open. So in my opinion, he should go get the hatches. He should prioritize hatches over outside facing walls. And the main reason for this is because if we go back to our priority list, we had outside facing walls as the number one thing to get. So assuming most people follow this priority, another defender will go get them. And since Cade's gadget is so specialized towards hatches, being that it's the only one that can prevent hatches from being opened, he should prioritize getting that since his gadget will get full potential on the hatches. And also for the most part, at least in the lower levels, hatches go unreinforced because most people just reinforce whatever's on site and then forget what's above them. So if Cade goes and gets hatches and puts his electric claw on it, the attackers will have a much harder time of actually getting into sight through the hatches. And that concludes the quiz section of the video. Before I give you guys your results on how many questions you got right, I do just want to take 15 seconds to quickly plug my Twitch channel. If you guys enjoy my videos and the content I upload on YouTube, consider checking out the Twitch channel. 
I play Siege every single day from noon until 4, live on Twitch. And if you really, really want to support the channel because you like the content, consider subscribing. You can sub for free if you have Amazon Prime. You link your Twitch account to your Amazon account, and you have one free sub to use every single month. If you don't have Amazon Prime, you can still subscribe for $5. Every sub helps, and I really do appreciate your guys' support. And back to the quiz results, here are some scores based on how many questions you got right. Let me know in the comments down below how well you did, because I want to see how much you guys learned from this video. And also let me know in the comments how informational you thought this video was. When I first started it, I really didn't think I was going to be able to talk about it too much, and then it kind of kept developing until it got to a 35 minute video. And I really do hold Siege School to a much higher standard than all my other videos. So I want to make sure that actually gets through to you guys. So please let me know if you guys have any feedback or suggestions. And last thing before I go, one more quick plug. I do have a merch store, check it out. Link to the store is down below in the description. I do have a few Siege designs up there, and I'll be getting one more for Christmas in the next week or so. So keep an eye on the store. And I think depending on what country you're in, the merch should just appear right below the video. But if it doesn't, click the link, go check it out. Anyways, thank you very much guys for watching this video. I put a lot of stress on myself trying to make sure that it was actually up to good standard compared to the old Siege School videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. And I'll see you in four or five, maybe eight months in the next Siege School video. Take care guys.